name is Alexis Stossel, A-L-E-X-I-S, last name S-T-O-S-S-E-L. And Ms. Stossel, how did you know Malcolm Jones? Both of them and I first met at Harding my junior year, it was 2013. We had both been selected to sit on the College of Business Student Advisory Board. So there are about 10 or 12 students um, that are recognized as leaders, as leaders as part of Harding University. And we sat on a board together um, to work to improve the business building and to help improve students during their time at Harding and after. Um, I had always known of both of them. I mean, everybody knows both of them. But I had never met him until the day that we sat on that board. And after that day, we were best friends ever since. Is it fair to say that both of them was your person? Yes. Next to my husband, both of them was my absolute person. <coughs> During your time at Hardy, how did you recognize both of them affecting the students on campus? Both of them was a natural leader. I mean, in every aspect between friendships, um, groups that he was involved with, he took a leadership role. Um, people gravitated towards him. It didn't matter if you didn't know him personally or you just were in the same room. You just felt welcomed by his presence. Okay. Excuse me. And how did your husband and both of them get along? I always joked that once I had introduced the two of them that it was me that was the third wheel <laughs> because they talked nonstop about sports and, and life. And anytime something would happen in the NBA, oh man, both of them would immediately text my phone and say, I gotta talk to Jacob. And I finally was like, you have his number, just call him. I don't wanna talk about sports. <laughs> but they, they loved to get together and we used to hang out a lot. showing you what's been identified as State's Exhibit 333, 339, 340, 341, 342, 343, 345, and 346. Have you uh, seen before? I have. Okay. And will these, I'm sorry. Was the first one you I mentioned 333. Did I say, I'm sorry, 338, Your Honor. Okay. 338 through 346 consecutively. Thank you. Um, and you've seen these photos before? I have. Um, and do you think these photos will help the jury understanding uh, our discussion about both of them? Absolutely. the Rock House, which is the, it's a community outreach center um, that's ministry based. He um, worked directly beneath uh, Todd Gentry as sort of a ministry intern. Um, together, the Rock House um, helps put on License for Christ, which um, both of them <coughs> helped organize most of it. He, the students of Harding, uh, roughly about 3,000 people, we come together for a weekend and we go into the community and we help anyone in need. 
um, whether it be you know fix up their house, move things around for them, or take them somewhere. And Botham was a big part of putting that all together and kind of rallying the student body to make them want to be more involved and make them want to reach out and help the community. Um, he was also uh, in a social club uh, at Harding. It's called Sub T16. It was he was very prideful of his club. It's a great it's a great way to get to know other students um, and get more involved at Harding. Um, he was very heavily involved in the College of Business, which he majored in accounting, and um, he was a part of many different teams, both um, competitively in the College of Business and then in classes, and then like the student advisory board that we set on together. And of course, he led um, he led worship during at Harding University. It's a Christian-based college, and every day they have what's called chapel, which is 30 minutes of time where the student body meets together. Um, they take time to worship God and um, get general announcements. And he, he was a leader with, with chapel as well. And you talked about Todd Gentry. Uh, and he was here with us in the courtroom for the last two weeks. Yes. And he had to go back to Arkansas this morning. He did. I, I like to call the Gentrys both of Arkansas parents. They, they were wonderful people that mentored him throughout his entire college career. Now, <clears throat> when you and both of became friends, had you were already dating your husband? I actually was not dating my husband yet. My husband and I began dating about six months after both of them and I had met. And how did that relationship go when you tell your husband, my guy, my person is a male friend? <laughs> well, both of them and I like to always say that we were the exception to the rule that boys and girls can't be friends. And I told my husband, I said, hey, I, you know, I love you, but this man is going to be in my life forever. <laughs> and he's going to be a part of us forever because, thank you. Because I can't imagine. living life without my other person. At some point, Ms. Falcon, that you and both of them come back to Dallas. I graduated in May of 2015, and that was when both of them started his internship at PwC. So I was starting a career, and he was beginning, kind of, you know, the end phases of his college career and starting his own. And we kind of took on Dallas together. We um, we didn't really know anybody. We had a few alumni here in Dallas, but but he and I, we just we did everything together. I mean. Sometimes he would just show up on the doorstep of my apartment with Chipotle and just say, I've got to watch Scandal and just be quiet for an hour. So we would just hang out all the time. What was his name that he had for you? So, as you can tell from a lot of photos and, and things that you see of both of them, he was, he stood out, and in every caption of every photo, he always made me say, you have to put your black friend both of them. <laughs> so a lot of the captions in our past has got, you know, me sitting next to him, and it says, here's my black friend both of them. <laughs> what did he call you? He called me Big Tex. Um, I am obviously very tall, and I'm originally from Texas. And he said, you know, Alexis just wouldn't do. So he always referred to me as Big Tex. <laughs> Did he refer to you calmly also as Alex? Um, sometimes, but not very often. And did you come to learn that his parents thought you were a boy named Alex? He did. The first time I met his parents, they were kind of confused. Because <laughs> they knew my name, but they didn't. They had never met me in person. And then once I had told them some stories, they were like, oh, we had thought you were a boy this whole time. <clears throat> now, Ms. Falcon, I'm going to show you some photos, and I want you to kind of tell the jury about some of these photos, okay? Okay. I'm showing you what's marked as Thanksgiving. 
346. And <clears throat> is that Volga? Yes. So this is taken at Harding. This is um, a part of his social club, sub T16. Um, you, when you're a part of a social club, you get a jersey with the with the club's name on it. And every Friday, you wear that jersey on campus and all around. And something that sub T is very much known for when they take photos is you look away with a thumbs up across your chest. So that is the classic sub T stance at Harding. Now. At some point, you and your husband were married, of course. What role did both of them take in that uh, ceremony? So I wanted both of them to be a part of the wedding, but more so I wanted his voice to be a part of our wedding because he had such a unique voice um, and just, just a speaking voice. So he was the MC at our wedding, so he introduced everybody, and he was in charge of the playlist and made sure that we cut the cake on the right time and, and danced on the floor. And So he was... He was there the whole time. I'm showing you what's going to happen. Stacey's at 3.38. And what was that from? That's from the night of our wedding. Um, and that was taken just at the reception hall. And so you told us a little bit of how both of them and your husband became close fast friends. Uh, what kind of uh, things that you all did together as a group? Um, besides the usual um, cookouts at our house or um, at Botham's apartment, we went to all kinds of sporting events together. I, a firm that I had worked for, um, I had the opportunity for a lot of free tickets uh, to Mavericks games and, and to Stars games, and Botham demanded he be a part of that all the time. And so we saw, I think we saw seven or eight NBA games one season, and both of them was at every one of them. And I'm showing you what's been marked for identification purposes as Stacey's exhibit 339. Who are those individuals in this photo? That's myself and both of them and my husband, Jacob. Um, the caption you don't see on that photo is me and Jacob with our black friend, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas, um, did both of them and yourself attend church together? We did. Um, on Tuesday nights, we would we would go to church together, and we would just worship together. And when we would listen to the sermon, we would both take notes. And then after church, we'd go find somewhere to eat, and we would compare whether we agreed with what the sermon said based on what the Bible says, or what we would have done differently. And that was our spirits, is we were always taking a situation and looking at it from every angle and seeing if we agreed or not. I'm showing you what's been admitted as states that are 340. Do you remember this? I do. That is, um, that was taken right after church. That's another Harding alumni. Um, and both of them and I, um, right after church. And then states is at 341. This, do you follow this photo in a second? I do. Um, this photo is taken right after both of them and I became good friends. Um, the College of Business has, um, has a cookout every year for their business students. Um, it's kind of where you get to see what different clubs they offer. Um, I was the president of the management club, so I had to man a booth, and um, both of them was just there walking around, um, getting to know all of the new students and meeting everybody, and somebody snapped that photo. Now, was both of them the friend who would do almost anything for his friends? <coughs> oh, yeah. and. You could volunteer him for something, and he'd show up acting like he volunteered himself. <laughs> um, and at one point, did he officiate the wedding of some of you all's classmates? He did. Um, Caitlin and Exy are two really, really good friends of both of ours. And they asked him, they wanted him to be a part of their wedding, and they asked him to be the officiant. And I'm showing you, let's go mark this case, is it? 
And the bottom left, you can see both of them. You can see both of them. Can you spell X and for the court reporter? X-E is E-C-C-E. And then the state's exhibit 343. Is that another photo? It is. Where was that wedding located? It was in Nashville, Tennessee. And how did you get there? Um, so I am from East Texas, and it's actually shorter to drive um, from East Texas to Nashville than Dallas by one whole hour. <laughs> so both of them drove to our house uh, the night before the um, rehearsal dinner was, and both of them and I got in the car and drove 10 hours straight to Nashville together. And what was that road trip like? It was so much fun. Um, both of them and I hadn't, I had already moved back to East Texas, so I didn't get to see both of them as much during that time. And um, we spent the whole 10 hours just singing songs at the top of our lungs um, and talking about life in general. Um, my biggest memory of that trip is we debated on what success meant to us, you know, whether it was how much money you had or what your job title was, but he just really believed that success was your impact on people and how you help people. And dates 344. What's going on in that photo? So, both of them was a procrastinator. And um, he had to write a letter to the bride and groom in their Bible. And that is me and him coming up with the perfect letter to write inside the Bible to give to the couple, very last minute. <laughs> and the wedding photographer busted us with a photo. <laughs> okay, uh, can I have a light on? Of course, thank you. <coughs> Ms. Fossil, did you and both them, I guess kind of, always bounce off his problems with you or your problems with him? Always. Yep. He would call me after work if it was a tough day or even if it was a good day and I was the same. Um, when I lived in Dallas I had a hard time figuring out what I wanted to do with my career and what I wanted to be and both of them was always there encouraging to me to find find the good in every situation. If something was unethical or if something was just challenging, find the good. What is it teaching you and how can you improve? We talked almost every day. If, if it wasn't a phone call, it was a text message. Can I have a question? Yes. Um, you said that you were debated and made the decision to move back home to East Texas, is that correct? It is. And was that decision easy for you? It was very hard. Um, the uh, business major in me thought you had to live in the big city to have the cool career. But the small town girl me wanted to be closer to our family and closer to where we wanted to be for the rest of our lives. So deciding to go home meant risking a big Dallas career and risking not seeing my best friend every day. And state wants to uh, offer state's exhibit 347, 348, and 349, previously tendered to the defense for any objection. Yes. The 
Alexis, you and I have spoken about your communications with both of them, and I asked you to send me uh, some text messages. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and was this text message around the time that you were making the decision to move? This was the day after um, we had both of them over for dinner to tell him that we would be moving to Kilgore. Um, I was really nervous to tell both of them because I wanted his approval and I was afraid that he would discourage us from moving. And did he discourage you? No. He, um, he was very encouraging the night that we told him told him this is going to be great. It's going to do good things for you guys. Family is so important. And then uh, the next day, he sent me these messages. Can you read them to the jury? So the first, me the first message is yo. And um, for those that know both of them, that's how he started almost every sentence. Um, so it says, yo, I just want to take a sec to remind you to always shoot your shot. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You can miss four shots in a row, but then you get the ball in your hands with five seconds left. Expletive, shoot it. <laughs> it's the most important shot of your life. It goes in, now you're the hero. You're absolutely killing it. I just wanted to leave you this message to let you know I fully support your decision to move to Kilgore. Not that you needed my approval or anything. But this could be the best decision of your life. You'll never know if you never attempt it. And I know you might be scared and expletive <laughs> and worry about the, the uncertainty of the future and all of that. But don't be. Because if it's one thing I've figured out in my short mid-20s life, it's that stuff eventually figures itself out. And then that text message continued. It did. <laughs> he was not afraid to double text. <laughs> and in States Exhibit 348, he continued with, I've always valued our friendship, and I want you to know that no matter where you and Jacob are, I would give up a limb for y'all, maybe two. And then he signed it, your black friend, Bo. Now, Ms. Fossil, I want to take you to September 6th of 2018. Did you talk to Bo that day? I did. What was that conversation like? Um, it was short. Uh, we had actually talked on the phone the day before about how life was getting better. Work was a little less stressful. He was excited about the upcoming days, and we had planned to have him come visit for the weekend in October. And then sometimes on days when he didn't have anything to say, we'd just send memes back and forth or just different photos. And on September 6th, in the middle of work, he sent me a very embarrassing photo of myself that was a memory from four years past, or three years past, when we had first moved to Dallas and were, we had to take a video for the College of Business to encourage new students. And he had made a meme of that photo. And I'm showing you what's then admitted states is at 349. And here at the top of that exhibit, is that the embarrassing photo you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. And, and most of the photo is cropped out, but the importance of the photo was that he had made it as a meme and said, return of big text, like return of a dinosaur. <laughs> And are these text messages coming from you? They are. Okay. And you send laughing, crying emojis? Yeah, just such good times, good memories. Um, he had responded, my phone does this memories thing, and it brought up all of our pics from Harding, and I almost cried. And I said, dude, I tear up all the time when Harding and Dallas photos pop up. And then he kind of... He's kind of mocking me here, like, oh, why are you so emotional? 
and I say because I'm a girl and I'm just so thankful all the time. And last read on 9-6 of 2018. Yeah, he, um, there's actually a response. All he said in response was LOL at 7 p.m. on September 6th. Did you see that LOL on September 6th? No. I woke up to it the next morning. And when you woke up the next morning, what else did you learn? I got a phone call about six in the morning. I was told that both of them had been shot and he didn't make it. I, um, I slumped to the floor and I just kept I just kept screaming, wait, 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 wait. I hung up the phone and I called both of them seven times and there was no answer. I have never lost someone this close in my life. And the feeling is just unexplainable. Because if I had just seen the text message, if I had just expanded that I'm thankful for you all the time, maybe it would be a little less painful.